Hi guys, I'm Laurel House. I'm a celebrity dating and empowerment coach and considered the man whisperer. You may recognize me from MTV or E's Famously Single. It's time to improve your dating strategy. From putting your best self online to having a first date that leads to something real, here are eight of my top tips. Some of them are even surprising and are going to challenge your typical dating style and advice that you might hear from other experts. But it works. And clearly, something isn't working, so you may as well try something new. Number one, what's the very first thing to think about before posting your profile? Would I date me? Yeah, that's the first thing you should think about. Take a look at yourself before looking for anyone else because you attract how you act and who you are, not what you want. Before you go out relation shopping with this long list of needs and wants in someone else, turn that list on yourself. If you're looking for admiration, adoration, integrity, vulnerability, consistency, trust, communication, someone who is honest and confident and consistent, well, are you? You can't expect someone else to be something you're not. So take a look at you, work on you first, and then put it out there and you will attract it in. Number two, when it comes to your written profile, what's the most important thing to think about? It's all about the details and descriptors. Instead of just describing yourself as fun, hardworking, interesting, choose more creative and accurate words that make you stand out, like quirky, effervescent, or I'm a self-proclaimed geek. In describing yourself and your activities, drop in a few details that actually paint a picture of who you are and make you memorable. So instead of saying um, that you like to work out and you go out to drinks with friends, maybe say, I run along Ocean Avenue three mornings a week, and I always stop and smell the roses, literally, especially the yellow ones. And when I go out for drinks, I'm a martini with gin, dirty, five olives kind of a girl. The point? To stand out and to create opportunities for connections and conversations. Number three, when it comes to your profile pictures, what type of picture should you post? Your photos should be your visual biography. They are showing and telling who you are and expanding on your written profile. Your main photo should be headshot style. So that is chest and up, looking directly at the camera, smiling, maybe flirting a little bit, showing your face and what you really look like. Then you also want a full body shot. I'm not talking about a sexy mirror selfie. I'm talking about what you actually look like in normal clothing, an activity shot, a photo of you doing an activity that you love to do, and a photo of you on a date, which doesn't mean you're on a date with someone else. It's just you looking at the camera, maybe having a drink, and that is going to allow the other person to imagine being out with you. All right, number four, how should you start a conversation online and what should you say? Hey, looks like we have a lot in common. We should grab a drink or coffee is not a conversation. One of the great benefits of online dating is the opportunity to pre-qualify through conversation. And that starts with the very first icebreaker. So think about questions that would intrigue you. What would you actually want to answer? Probably not, hey, what's up? Or looks like we have a lot in common. Or even, how's your day? How about instead say, tell me one thing that made you smile today. But don't just ask the question. The strategy is ask, answer, ask again. So for example, in the, what made you smile today? You're gonna say, so tell me one thing that made you smile today. As for me, it was waking up in a completely silent house, which does not happen very often. My two-year-old son was still sleeping. I went downstairs, made a cup of coffee, and then went into my garden and watched a butterfly that had just emerged from its cocoon. Perfection. What about you? Or, Quick, what does this emoji make you think about? First thing, and why? As for me, dot, 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 and you're gonna say it, or let's talk about the important things of life in life, ketchup, mayo, or other, and why? Here's mine. What about you, okay? Number five, how many exchanges back and forth before getting offline and moving the conversation to the next phase of asking out? You want to have four substantive exchanges each. That is a total of eight to build on the conversation. The first question, your starter question, is like the trunk of a tree. Each additional question builds out and up that tree. Don't lily pad, which is jumping from one topic to the next to the next. Like, what movies do you like? How was your weekend? So, you're a dating coach. That's interesting. Not 
interesting. You want a real conversation. So if we go back to the tell me one thing that made you smile today that I had just said as my starter conversation, look at how many conversation starters are there in my answer. I mentioned that I have a child, that I had a silent house, that I loved the coffee and the butterflies. You might then ask me about my child, about my morning routine. What is relaxing for me? How do I usually start my day if this was such a different way for me? There's so many opportunities not only to have different types of conversations, but also to learn about who I am and also to tell me about who you are. And it's so much more interesting than, so what kind of music do you listen to? The point is to get to know each other and see if you're a potential fit. Number six, before you go on a date, should you have a phone date? Well, yes, only if you're sick of having first dates that within seconds, you know, are a waste. Have a phone date. A phone date is a way to pre-qualify, allowing you to get to know each other before meeting in real life. It's a phone date because you set the time, like a date, so that you can both be physically and emotionally focused on each other. It's a set phone call at a designated time. And the reason why is because normally people don't like to have phone calls because you never know when to expect that call. If it's set, you expect it. At the end of the as long as one hour phone call, if you're not a fit, you know it. And it's much easier to break it off than it is to go out and then end it. At the end of the call, if you're not a fit, just say, you know what, you seem like you're a really great guy, but I just don't feel like we're a match. Easy. Number seven, should you text before a date? No, not before a first date. The only texting that you should do before a first date is to confirm the time and location, unless your date is a week out. Then you're gonna text midweek saying, hey, really looking forward to the date, so many things to talk about, I hope you're having a great week. Just to let them know that you're thinking about them. The reason why you don't wanna text is it creates opportunities for confusion, misunderstanding, and boredom. Why ruin the potential of something great before it even starts? And number eight, what about chemistry? How important is it on a first date? And what if you don't feel it on that first date? Date head first, not heart first. Chemistry is important, yes, but not essential on the first date. The first date is seeing if your values and needs align and can be met, not being clouded by self-made chemistry, which is actually a self-made drug. Even if you don't feel it on the first date, you can end up having an amazing, very attraction-oriented relationship that's actually real and deep. But on the first date, focus on are we a fit? Talk about your needs, learn about each other, date head first. The problem with chemistry is, people say love is blind, chemistry is blinding. It blinds you from the many potential red flags that someone has because they feel so good. And then you can then you being in a relationship with them without really getting to know them or ignoring what you get to know them. And then two months down the line, when the chemistry wears off, you suddenly sit there and think, wait, I don't like you. Why am I with you? And then it ends. On the other side, even if you feel that chemistry on the first date or not, on the first date, you have a great date or a good date, you get to know them, you realize that they're a great person, that you're really connected in many ways, go on a second date. Once you see that you are potentially a fit, then your head, dating head first, can say, okay, heart, now you can come on in. Now let's start to build the attraction. Let's allow the attraction to be revealed. Then start allowing that to come out naturally then that attraction is gonna be real and deep and rooted and lasting, as opposed to chemistry, which is fleeting. So those are my eight most important tips. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video if you liked it and subscribe, it will absolutely make my day. Um, you can learn more about me on my website, laurelhouse.com. Follow me on Instagram at laurelhouse. And if you wanna get immediate tips from me, then go to instantgo.com forward slash dating laurel. I hope you have a beautiful day. See you soon.